Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to talk about radicals and specifically for our assignment root, square roots. But the radical symbol has, is called, it's called a radical, the symbol that you know is the radical. The radicand is the number underneath and the index is the number here. Um, if we don't see a number there, we assume that it's 2. If we have an index of, of 2 or any positive number, the radicand cannot be negative. So that's important to remember because we're saying we want to take something, uh, the square root of something negative, and we can't do it. If you try it on your calculator, you get an error message. Later on, you learned about i, and maybe that's something we could do. But for now, we can't do it. We weren't just going to say d and e, or does not exist when that happens. We frequently say, assume all variables in the radicand represent positive values. That's for our convenience, and we'll look at why that is in a minute. If the index here was 3, such as this, where we actually saw an index, we can't assume it's 2 because we see it's 3, this is read as the cubic root of 27. And if it was 4, and we saw a 4 there, that would be read as the 4th root of 16. It could be the 17th root of 185, whatever. You can put any number you want in the index, but for our purposes, we're just talking about a 2, so we don't show it at all. This expression, the square root of 100, is asking the question, what number times itself would equal 100? That's what this symbol is asking. What number times itself would equal 100? And so square root of 100 is 10, because 10 times itself, or 10 to the second power, is 100. Notice that the power 2 here matches our index of 2. Those two things match. And that would happen if we had different uh, index as well. See if you can simplify these, if you want to pause the video and try them. And if it's not an exact number, round to the hundredths place. The square root of 49, square root of 45, square root of 400, and the square root of 75. So pause if you don't want to see these already. Um, the square root of 49 is 7 because 7 times 7 is 49. The square root of 45 is not an exact number. This number 45 is not a perfect square. That would round to 6.71 if you were asked to round to the hundreds place. Square root of 400 is 20 and the square root of 75 is 8.66. But let's take a look at this um, a little closer, number 2 and 4. Because if you have the square root of 45 and you put it into a calculator, you might get this answer, 3 square root of 5, and you might be like, what's going on? Well, some calculators automatically give you the decimal answer and some don't. If you want the decimal answer, an easy way to do it is when you put the 45 in, put, put the decimal point after the 45 and then hit enter. And that'll tell it that you want a decimal and then you'll get the decimal answer. If you don't want the decimal answer, you could leave that out and maybe get this one. Some calculators automatically default to the decimal. But what is 45? Well, 45 is actually 9 times 5. Why did I choose 9? I chose 9 because 9 is a perfect square. It's a perfect square that goes into 45. So if I think about that as the square root of 9 times the square root of 5, which I can do because 45 is 5 times 9, then I can simplify that 9 and get the square root, just get 3, and then I have the square root of 5. So that's something I can do if I ask me for an exact answer. 3 square root of 5 is the exact answer. 6.71 is a, as an approximated answer rounded to the hundreds place. See if you can do a similar thing for square root of 75. You can pause the video and try it. And what we want to do here is find a perfect square that goes into 75. Perfect square number is like 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, 4 times 4 is 16, and so forth. So those are the those perfect squares. So the perfect square in 75 is 25, so we're looking at 25 times 3. If I separate that out, the square root of 25 is 5, and so I get 5 square root of 3. So if they ask you for an approximation, this is what you're going to do. If they ask you for the exact number, you're going to simplify it that way. Why do 49 and 400 work so well? We just said that those are perfect squares. But remember that negative 7 to the second power would also be 49. And negative 20 to the second power would also be 400. So for now, we're just looking at the positive root. But we will need both roots to solve equations later in the course. So you need to remember when you're looking at the square root of 49, there's actually two roots there. Because there's two different ways to take a number to the second power to e equal that radicand. 
We can also simplify expressions that have variables in the radicand. So for now, we're going to assume that all those variable values are positive, and I said earlier in the video that I would tell you why. Without that assumption, we would need to use an absolute value symbol in our answer. The square root of x squared is actually this absolute value of x. For what we were just saying, we don't know if that's positive or negative value. So we would have to say, I don't know, it's one of those things, right? But we're just going to say it's positive. That saves us that hassle. In order to simplify a variable factor, divide its power by 2, since 2 is our index. If this was a cubic root, we would be dividing by 3 and so forth. And the power in underneath the radicand must be greater than... Um, must be 2 or greater to be simplified. So when you're doing something like this, you would do the number the way you did before. The square root of 25 is going to be 5. And then you would take this power of 2 and divide by 2, because 2 is the index. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, so the answer would just be 5y. And number 6, if we take this power of 4 and divide by 2, we're going to get 2. And if we take 6 and divide by 2, we're going to get 3. And so the answer of this would be x squared y cubed. Again, we would have to do some absolute values on there if we didn't have that assumption in place. Take a look at number 7. Number 7 has a perfect square number 144 here, and it's got a power of 4. But this power is 1. Remember, it has to be a power of 2 or greater to be simplified. So when I simplify that, that b cannot be simplified. It's going to be stuck under that radical. But the square root of 144 is 12, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we get 12a squared times the square root of b. And number 8 is the chumpy, because this is hard. It's got one of those numbers like, like 45 or 75 up here that we need to separate out. Plus, it has this value here, which is not an even number, so what if 2 doesn't go into it? Plus, it has this power of 1, so it's not great enough to be simplified. So let's look at what I would do first. First thing I would do is separate things out. So the 18 has a perfect square of 9 in it, so I would make that 9 times 2. Now I'm ready to simplify that the same way I did up here. The m does not have a power high enough. I know m is going to be stuck under my radical when we're done. Um, p to the 8th is perfect because I can divide that by 2 evenly. I'm not worried about that. And then what happened here? Well, I took q to the 5th power and I separated it. q to the 4th and q to the 1st. 4 plus 1 is 5, so I can separate that out. And now when I look at this, what I have, I have three things that I can simplify. The square root of 9, p to the 8th, and q to the 4th. And I have three things that can't be simplified. The 2, the m, and the q. So now I just have to simplify those three things in the front and then leave the 2mq underneath and I'll be golden. Square root of three, 9 is 3, 8 divided by 2 is 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we get 3, p to the 4th, q to the 2nd, 2mq. Tricky, huh? All right, have a fantastic day. We'll see you next time.